Shalom, greetings to you all in the name of Allah Jesus Christ, wherever you are. It's a blessed day that the Lord has granted us. And uh, again, He's good and His purposes are good. You know, God cannot offer something evil when there's no evil in Him. He can offer something that is not in Him. And because people have failed to see who God is first, they just attribute anything which they do not understand or misinterpret to God. Until you discover God, then you begin to attribute everything to Him, and yet um, those things are not true. It's like somebody who doesn't know you, and they begin to talk about a lot of things about you in public, and you hear them saying things that have nothing to do with you. So this is what happens, is that people go out there and begin to say everything about God, and then God is not like that. You see? Very important. But who is, who is uh, God? He's revealed as love. Alright, he's revealed as light. Is revealed as a spirit. We have to understand. You see, he's a father. We are his sons. He relates to us as sons, and and he he's a father. He's a parent. You know, the things he understands, we do not understand. That his understanding <laughs> is perfect. There are many things we are not able to explain and that is because and because of that we conclude in a certain way, we come up with certain conclusions that do not add up. And we claim that that is who God is and it's so terrible because we are creating an image of God that is not God and we are not scared of bowing down before that image we have created ourselves that we call God, which is not God. And because of that, we'll suffer for our own creation. People have created their own images. God that is in images is not new. So in case you're like, oh, I haven't created one, well, how about a number of them that you've created in your mind? You see, there are those who created them in images, you know, tangible physical images, but many are those who have created God in their own mind. And they, are, they don't have one God. They have created gods in their own mind. And remember what you think, how you think, whatever that you're convinced of or your belief system determines your experiences. And this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm talking about. All right. And we have to get it. So Jesus is dealing with the Pharisees and he's first showing them that they have twisted the word of God and they made it of non effect because of their traditions and their intentions were not good. So he's calling them pretenders or hypocrites. All right, so he's saying there's nothing, you, you know, your intentions are not good. And he said, these people draw near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts hold off and are far away from me. All right, that is uh, 
chapter 15 of Matthew chapter 15 verse Matthew chapter 15 verse 8 do you know that once your voice has been when your voice is speaking all right because this is these people draw near me with their mouths in order me with their lips but their hearts hold off and are far away from me so imagine you you are using your voice and you know many people don't even know how to discern these things but to god is crystal clear you cannot fool god because even your voice will betray you so he could listen and he heard the voice of a person and he could see that only the lips are moving but the heart is not even close to that man so he's seeing a fragmented person whose heart is i don't know where and whose lips are there and so <laughs> the man is disconnected himself how can you have your lips there and your heart somewhere far far away from you so he can discern what part you have you are using your your lips but your heart is far your body is far your soul is far your everything is far and this reveals to us that if we are to give thanks to god or we're praising him we're supposed to praise him with all our being we cannot pre praise jesus praise god praise our God with our lips alone. He can easily discern. You see, men can fool men, and they can only fool men who are also not real in their hearts. Because if you are real, whatever that is not of God, you will know. You will know. And when you are not looking for the truth, you will encounter evil. If you're looking for the truth, it doesn't matter where you've been eventually you encounter truth that stands as a principle so uselessly do they worship me why because their hearts is fun and all i want is their hearts their hearts is a seat of their thoughts emotions and a will imagine so you wonder why are you even doing that it says hypocrites pretenders for they teach as doctrines the commandments of men all right so jesus after saying that he said in verse 10 and jesus called the people to him and say to them listen and grasp and comprehend this 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 all right i i, I like the way he's putting it now number one he said i want you to listen now he called the people Remember, these people were under the influence of Pharisees. But he wants to speak, to say some sayings, I mean, to reveal something so that he may free them, set them free from these people who had no heart, who didn't care. So, and Jesus called, by the way, is the only one who could afford to speak to them that way. Because for the first time, For the first time this is happening somebody is at least standing and confronting the side the pharisees none else could do that the pharisees were not confronted by anybody else except jesus thanks to jesus because he came and spoke some saints and said something and and confronted what was there and helped people see better i mean their eyes open all right, verse 10 says, and Jesus called the people, which people? Those people that have been gullied, uh, gullible, the people who are lied to, deceived by, by the Pharisees. And he called the people to him and said to them, listen, that's number one, and grasp, number two, and comprehend this, number three. So he wanted them to listen carefully. He wanted them to grasp it and comprehend what he was about to say because he knew they might miss it because he used to use parables in his speech. So he wants them to get it because this is so deep. He is first letting them know the importance and how deep what he's going to say is. And so he's saying, please, 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 please listen. Get this. Get it. <laughs> Glory to God. You see now? 
Glory to God. All right. Now, verse 11. It is not what goes into the mouth of a man that makes him unclean and defiled. My, my. But what comes out of the mouth, this makes a man unclean and defiles him. I repeat again. It is not what goes into the mouth but a revelation of a man that makes him unclean, unclean. So because their concern, quote in court, was uncleanliness. Or was that their concern? No. But it's okay. Jesus is going to teach them something from what they had uh, begun. All right, the arguments they began. So he's actually telling people because they had confronted the Pharisees and just exposed them. And after that, he called people to try and speak some sense and minister to them so that they may have the right perception of things. So he's saying now that it is not what goes into the mouth of a man that makes him unclean and defiles and defiled. So that thing that is coming from outside, which is making man unclean, that is defiling him. But what comes out of the mouth, this makes a man unclean and defiles him. What is coming from the mouth? What is inside you? What is being released from you? Is what defiles him. My goodness, because this is the secret. Jesus is revealing to the people that, well, 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 these Pharisees have told you that you should clean your hands before you eat because they are saying this is important, but the truth is they never got the point here. Jesus says, let me show you how these things work or let me interpret it correctly, how you're supposed to understand it. It is not what goes into the mouth. It is not what is coming from the outside. It is what is coming from the inside. It is not about the experiences, the the circumstances. It is what is in your mind. Because you can only speak what is in your heart. All right? The seat of your thoughts. What you have in you is what you speak. And so he says we do not know that when we release that which is wrong... We have defiled ourselves. If I speak something that is contrary to the truth, I'm defiling myself before I contaminate the environment or circumstances. And I did know, and he's saying in other words, that, well, this is, co- this is deeper because it will actually affect even your environment. So the environment will be affected by what is coming out of you. Out of you. It's not what is coming on the outside. So stop blaming those Things on the outside begin to realize that it's about what is coming from the inside, from your heart. Otherwise, you will just blame people who are innocent. You will blame yourself for, for nothing. You should know that what comes from the outside is the issue. No, no, no. What is coming from the inside is the issue. Not outside. Glory to God. Glory to God. And he's correcting the minds of these people. It was for their first, they had had this thing. It was the first time to hear this. It was their first time to hear this. Because trust me, they didn't know that this is the fact. They didn't know that this is how it worked. They didn't know that this was the idea. You mean to say that, okay, it's not about outside, it's on the inside? Yes. And this is why I'm saying, your mind determines your experiences. What you focus on, what you're fixing your gaze on, what you know, what you carry, what you hold dear in your heart. Shalom, shalom.